If you're new to the Gambia, then here's your introduction to the delights of Africa's smallest nation. If you've been here before, perhaps we can give you some happy memories. Reminders of the many things to do and see on the smiling coast. On the Atlantic coast of West Africa with miles of sandy beaches, the Gambia can be the perfect spot for that traditional sand and sea holiday. Near the hotels you find all the usual facilities. Small bars sell tasty snacks and drinks. Everything in fact from a fresh pineapple to afternoon tea on the beach. Daily temperatures vary little throughout a full 12 month season. This is definitely the way to spend January. Most of the holiday hotels are sited on this southern coastal strip a short walk from pool to beach. Gambian hotels can match international standards, the Kairaba being particularly well appointed. It offers five-star comfort with air conditioning, satellite TV, and a general air of luxury. There's plenty to do and see in the Gambia, and help is always at hand for excursion advice. Yes, it's a traditional Gambian pirogue style boat, which is like a very long canoe. It does have an inside and an outside, so you can stand upon the deck and get a good view over the countryside as you're going along. Of course, you can sit inside. Many of the hotels have extensive gardens with lots of exotic plants a natural home for hundreds of species of birds. A stroll here makes a change from the beach, though there's plenty to attract the more energetic. Sporting activities are a speciality of the Hotel Senegambia, with facilities also available on a club basis, and tuition for most of the popular sport and fitness activities. In some ways a more modest hotel, the African village nevertheless has one of the most interesting pool bars. The local staff are friendly and the welcome is as warm as you'll get anywhere. These three hotels are just a sample. The Gambia has many more to suit all tastes and pockets. In fact, with all this cosseting, it's easy to forget you're in Africa. But just a coach ride away. The Damel dance group have their own compound close to the hotel area. Several times a week they entertain holidaymakers with some of the traditional dances of West Africa. This is the African experience, including food, drink, crafts and even fortune telling. This dance, Doomba, celebrates the coming of the rainy season, as you'd expect an important event in what remains an agricultural society. would traditionally have been judged on their performance by the chief of the Serer tribe.
dawn over the mangrove swamp, and already keen ornithologists are out spotting the early birds, with breakfast laid on. Estimates vary on the number of bird species found in the Gambia, but there are certainly plenty to see in this area around Lamming and the Abuku Nature Reserve. The dugout canoe is perfect for bird watching. It's quiet and unobtrusive. Pelicans are a common sight, but the wood ibis is rarer. The dugout's been in use for thousands of years, its low platform in the water ideal for the local oyster fishermen. The oysters are found at low tide clinging to the mangrove roots. Here and there along the banks of the Bolong, piles of empty oyster shells are evidence of a continuous harvest of this delectable shellfish. Cooked in their shells over an open charcoal fire, the oysters are a delicious ingredient of the river people's staple diet. The whole family share the work in Gambian society, and goats need a daily wash. The larger pirogues provide an alternative means of transport. Many offer holidaymakers food and musical entertainment too. Most journeys begin and end at Lamin Lodge. women welcome the fishermen in celebration of a large catch. The song, Omisilo, refers to a mythical place in the sea which is rich in fish. Close to the bustle of modern Bacau is the calm of the sacred crocodile pool, Kachikali. Here, troubled businessmen and women with fertility problems consult the sacred crocodiles. The pool is said to contain a rare white crocodile, but it's seldom seen. Generally, the Nile crocs sleep during the heat of the day, but just occasionally they get a little curious. No 
need to worry, though. This one, at least, is tame. Charlie's been hand-reared by the local village boys. The tourist market in Bacau is fun and friendly. Everybody in Gambia shakes hands at least a hundred times a day. Many of the crafts are made on site and special orders are welcome. Bargaining is the name of the game. First price down to best price and then keep going. Other crafts originate here in Brikama a coach ride from the main hotel area. Here you don't even leave the bus before the sales pitch begins. The weavers of Brikama are proud craftsmen still making their cloth in the way their great-great-grandparents did. Skillfully and carefully, by pedal power. The gentle rhythm of the loom fits well with the pace of African life. The factory is part of the community. Whatever tools may be required are made locally. The numo, or blacksmith, is a man of some importance. The Dawn Ferry from the capital, Banjul. Many visitors to the Gambia follow in the footsteps of the celebrated American author, Alex Haley. This was the search for roots. It was here, in May 1967, that in search of the history of many black Americans, Alex Haley first crossed the Gambia River. Could it perhaps be the Kambi Bolong his ancestors had referred to? Twelve years' research in America through hundreds of documents had brought Haley to the end of what written records there were, and a map of Gambia. Taking this road, Haley went in search of the celebrated Jali, or oral historians. The Jali sang of a Kunta Kinte of Jufare, taken into slavery at the time of the king's soldiers. Was this the missing link in Haley's historic jigsaw puzzle? Would he find his lost relatives separated by 200 years, 4,000 miles, and six generations? Jufari is just another quiet village now, but living here in a humble compound is perhaps the most famous woman in Africa, Binta Kinte, allegedly the sixth generation cousin of Alex Haley. The ruins of the old French trading post mark the spot of the original slave market. Controversy now surrounds the root story. Perhaps Haley allowed poetry to take over when the facts didn't fit. But whatever, for every black American, Kinte's story remains a symbol, if not a fact. Fort James did play host to thousands of Africans cruelly seized from their villages. 
For many, this was the last sight of home and of Africa. These crumbling walls are one of the few monuments to the fate of 15 million people. In appalling conditions, they were incarcerated here before being crammed like sardines onto the slave ships. Ships like the Lord Ligonier sail to the New World carrying their human cargo. Farmers and fishermen, poets and musicians, the rich heritage of culture that is now black America. Today, most holiday makers visit Jufere in comfort and style on a gentle river cruise. This Spanish boat makes the upriver journey several times a week, and there's plenty of time for sunbathing, swimming, and enjoying the excellent onboard buffet. There are no crocodiles in this part of the river. The dolphins, however, usually make an appearance, especially if there are cameras to perform for. The cruise ends back at Denton Bridge, well in time for dinner. The Jola tribe have their own home brew, or jungle juice. All over the Gambia you see trees apparently giving fruit to plastic bottles. This isn't a Japanese innovation, just the modern way of collecting the raw palm oil, later fermented to form the traditional palm wine. Jola dancing always gives rise to friendly rivalry. Who can be the most energetic? popular ways of getting around the Gambia is the Land Rover adventure. Most days one or other of the tour operators runs a trip to the south, towards Senegal and the Casamance area. Sarah Kunda, familiar from that first drive from the airport, is Gambia's West End, complete with traffic. The first stop is the local livestock market, with many unusual breeds of cattle and sheep. Many of the guides like to stop and explain the Gambia's big game, termites. Well, they feel big enough if they get inside your shirt. Therefore, we don't sit on top of Carmine Mount.
stop at a Jolla village and time to admire the silk cotton tree, a traditional compound and some more authentic dancing, usually with an invitation to join in. Most of the tour operators make regular contributions to local schools, helping along the building of new classrooms and to supply much needed pens, paper and books. This is often a chance too for holiday makers to make their own contribution, perhaps in exchange for a song or dance. Beaches down south are some of the best and often deserted. Another popular stop is the local fishing village. Here the people are frequently Senegalese, visiting for the fishing season and drying their catches in the Gambian sun. The return trip is via the road or beach, depending on the tide. And after the dust of the road, the bar usually does extremely well. Gambian food offers plenty of variety, from African couscous to the five-star buffets of the major hotels. Most have barbecue nights too, and special buffets several evenings a week. This is the Kairaba's Italian night. The music heard on these evenings is often provided by the local Kora musicians, the gentle African harp, once heard in the royal courts of Mali. is the custodian of village tidiness, frequently present at the airport these days to take newly arrived holiday makers unawares. In the circumcision ceremony, the young boys must show their bravery by responding unflinchingly to the Kumpo's presence. The Mamapara, or stilt man, is also known as the marabou, a fortune teller and wise teacher. When Sir David Attenborough visited the Abuko Nature Reserve for Wildlife on One, he described it as a jewel in the sun, a little bit of the old Gambia lovingly preserved. This is what it was like one quiet afternoon in January on just a casual visit and there were colobus monkeys and Nile crocodiles alongside many of the Abuku's 200 species of birds. The monkeys and crocs treat each other with mutual respect.
The Abuku was founded in 1967 by an Englishman, Eddie Brewer. His sterling work established a base in the Gambia for the Wildlife Conservation Department, along with other important outposts at Bijolo and on the river itself. In the Banjul Declaration of 1977, President Jawara paid tribute to the many lost species of the Gambia and pledged an oath to the preservation of those that remain. There are no wild lions or elephants at Abuko, but there is a wonderful sense of peace and tranquility, the feeling of an oasis where wildlife can wander without threat, at least as long as they're not on the crocodile's shopping list. As you can see, there's more to the Gambia than sun and sand. It's the perfect introduction to the African experience. Yeah.